Hi there, this is Jonathan Ginsberg. I'm a Social Security Disability Attorney. And today I'd like to talk to you about what it means for Social Security Disability purposes if you have a diagnosis of Sjogren's Syndrome. And if you've got Sjogren's, you know that this is an autoimmune condition. It's most frequently, uh, most frequent um, symptom you're going to experience would be dry eyes and dry mouth. But more importantly, it's typically associated with other autoimmune conditions like lupus or rheumatoid arthritis. And it can, again, have a number of different symptoms that are also part of uh, the lupus or the rheumatoid arthritis. That could be joint pain, great deal of fatigue, um, and, and things like that. So my experience has been that, that a diagnosis of Sjogren's, it's rare that it's going to be solely Sjogren's. It's typically going to be along with lupus or rheumatoid arthritis or perhaps even fibromyalgia. And uh, so I, I, don't, I don't typically ever see Sjogren's as, as on its own. Um, I don't know that I've ever had a case that uh, the, the case was actually awarded purely on Sjogren's. Typically, it is part of the picture. And what I mean by that is that when we're arguing that my client is not able to work because of the symptoms associated with lupus, the joint pain, sensitivity to light, uh, myofascial pain, or rheumatoid arthritis, which is, of course, where the joints uh, swell and there's a, a, a degradation of the cartilage in the joints, um, and that's associated with Sjogren's, that's part of the picture. So uh, typically, if I'm going to pursue a disability case and Sjogren's is there, that's going to be a secondary condition along with something else. That can be quite su significant and severe. Also, the medications that you're prescribed for Sjogren's uh, can also have significant side effects. But typically, it's going to be part of a picture along with some other autoimmune condition. And it's just, it also, I think it also shows that sometimes these autoimmune conditions, it's hard to sort of draw lines but one between the next, that they're all kind of combined together and they're given different labels, but it's all basically the same thing where the body's attacking itself, the immune system is attacking the body, and Sjogren's is simply one set of symptoms you might have, whereas fibromyalgia or rheumatoid arthritis or lupus uh, may be given uh, a label for different types of symptoms. So if you have been diagnosed with Sjogren's, uh, the question I would ask is what else have you you've been diagnosed with? What are the symptoms you're experiencing? How severe are they? What are the medications you're taking? And how significant are the side effects of those medications? And the bottom line question I'm going to ask is, how does all this impact your capacity to work at a simple entry-level job? I would call this almost a warm body job. If you could simply uh, appear at the job, do one small step, uh, maybe packing an item or inspecting something or monitoring security cameras. you got to be there eight hours a day, five days a week. You can sit or stand, but you have to be there. Your attendance, you cannot miss more than two or three days of work a month, or you cannot take unscheduled breaks. That is the question. If you, can, if you can't get through an eight-hour day uh, week after week without taking excessive breaks or needing to miss a bunch of days because uh, you simply are too tired or too, too much pain to go to work, You've got strong support from a doctor, ideally a rheumatologist or a specialist, not just a GP, um, that indicates in the form of a functional capacity evaluation that you have these significant symptoms that would interfere with your ability and your capacity to work a simple entry-level type of job. We have a good shot at it. And judges nowadays understand that autoimmune conditions are very real. Uh, I personally think there's a lot of environmental chemical issues going on that a lot of people with these autoimmune conditions have, exposed, have been exposed to chemicals or live in an environment where maybe the water, the air uh, was, was uh, terribly polluted, that type of thing. But whatever the cause is, whatever the reason for the autoimmune condition, if you can show significant levels of symptoms, and again, which Sjogren's, it's going to be the dry mouth and the uh, the the difficult the, the pain in the joints uh, and the uh, the dry eyes. Uh, sometimes it's um, sensitivity to cold, always being cold. Uh, whatever the symptoms you're experiencing, are they along with other autoimmune symptoms such, severe enough such that you would not be able to maintain 
competitive work at any level and even a simple entry level type of job. That's how I look at it. Um, and so if you're dealing with all this, if you're dealing with Sjogren's and other autoimmune conditions, you'd like me to give you a free case evaluation, please reach out to me. I'd be happy to do so. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube and like it on Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And of course, if you've not already done so, please grab a copy of my free Secrets to Getting Approved uh, Dis Social Security Disability Survival Kit. It's something that's delivered by email, no obligation. Um, and I'd be more than happy to send that to you. Just sign up for it. The, the link is here. And of course, if I can be of help to you personally, please reach out to me as well. So this is Jonathan Ginsberg, wishing you well. Thanks a lot. Hi, this is Jonathan Ginsberg, and I hope you found this video helpful. If you'd like to know more about how to win your Social Security Disability case, I'd like to invite you to download my Secrets to Getting Approved Early Survival Kit that I created just for people like you. Currently, I'm making the survival kit available at no cost and I encourage you to grab your copy now. Some of the topics I cover include, how do I know if I have a case? Is it the right time for me to file my claim? Nine common mistakes that can doom your case. The three must have arguments you use to win your case. And a topic that every disability claimant wants to know, how to avoid trick questions from the judge. If you or a loved one need to win Social Security Disability Benefits, you'll find this survival kit essential reading. Download your survival kit right now and at no cost. Just visit ssdanswers.com backslash survival and sign up. It's that easy. Please act now. And as always, I wish you the best.